Yeah. We're now joined by one of the powerhouses of the Irish comedy scene. I'm You'll a know powerhouse. Yeah. <laughs> you will know him from his satirical sketches on Republic of Telly, presenting the breakfast show on 2FM, hoofing it on Dancing with the Stars and being one half of Bridget Naaman. Give it up for Bernard O'Shea. Hey, hey, hey. Woo! I had the worst type of childhood to be a stand-up because it was <laughs> it was very <laughs> idyllic. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was, uh, you know, yeah, it was just... Um, chasing cows around the field. Yeah, fighting lads from cameras. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We never got to play cameras. Uh, there was a... It was like a... Um, it was like a kind of a tribal thing. They couldn't, you couldn't leave us in the same room at the same time. Who's your tootsies type situation? So, but no, it was, um, <laughs> yeah, just a tootsies. tootsies. That's what it was. Oh, it, was uh, it was, it was, um, it was, it was tribal. It was like the yeah, genocide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and county finals have been genocidal in yeah. each. Uh, but no, it's, um, yeah, no, it was interesting. Yeah? It was just very fun growing up. I didn't do, you know, there was no real like dramas or there was just you just played hurling football soccer whatever you want to do just one big episode of Glen Row <laughs> yeah yeah just one big episode of Glen Row um, we w- played on the road yeah. so you just go car and you get in off the road yeah we were, only, um, we were only saying that with each other last week. We were saying, like, we'd have a full scale, like, seven on seven soccer match in the middle of the road. Yeah. And just get, and you, you could, nowadays, you'd be ran over. Electric car, kill yeah, yourself. Yeah, you wouldn't hear it. <laughs> yeah. I used to do a bit, I uh, still do on, on the. Um, we were told in primary school um, once that there was um, a, a man going around with a blue car <laughs> and he was offering children sweets, right? <laughs> And it was on the day we got our summer holidays. And I just remember every young lad left that school going, we've got to find this pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, he's got sweets. So, like, you would, so, so you made your own fun. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, so, but that, was, that was it. Yeah, we'd play on the road, build camps. We used to leave boxes uh, on, on, like, with, with a bow on, on the middle of the road and wait for cars to stop. <laughs> I just take the piss. Um, we used to put genuinely. Um, I used to s- we used to dress pretend we're young lads, dress up as the IRA, and we used to make these guns from barrels and black tape. I remember once we we jumped up and went, and this woman <laughs> <laughs> fell over, and and oh gosh, do you know what? <laughs> but I remember my father bet the shit out of me. <laughs> it's because it was like she was in. A, she was so. Uh, she was terrified. She was petrified, and she was crying and. Pulling off by the clubs. We're only seven. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, and there's lots of stuff like you might find an old porn mag turn into a ditch, and that would mm. get you going for six months. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It was just, or someone would get a new dog, or so it was very idyllic. There was no <laughs> most stand-ups have a jilted or edged yeah. childhood. Mine wasn't really. It was go home and come back when you're hungry. Yeah. yeah. I did, yeah. I did cultural studies in Dundalk. Dundalk, IT, the regional. <laughs> and so I did... How did you end up doing that? I didn't get enough points for arts. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did, actually. And I did, and do you know what? Here's what I did, and I, I chose Dundalk, and it was the best thing I ever did. But I chose Dundalk over UCD, and I went to do cultural studies, which archaeology, film, and theatre, for, for three years. Jesus. And then for your fourth year, you, you took an elective. So, and I took... Uh, uh, archaeology landscape so uh, I go away yeah 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 that, that's some combination archaeology and theatre yeah but well that's <laughs> c- culture <Yeah>. culture studies <laughs> <laughs> what's so good about Dundalk yeah. oh it's an amazing town yeah oh yeah and it was when there was still bombs <laughs> 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 and it was still even good <laughs> but it, it, it was uh, it's a great town yeah hey y'all where are you from hey <laughs> and it's got it's own thing they're a separate identity to everybody else even Drogheda they're separate. Really? It's not, yeah. They're just, it's like the town and we used to go watch football. We used to go watch Dundalk when they were not good, when they were really not good. And uh, we were going up to Oriel Park. We used to call it L'Oreal Park because they're worth it. You know? <laughs> uh, there's a great comedian from Dundalk called uh, Colin McDonald who has some fantastic gags about watching Dundalk. But I was telling him we were getting a, a taxi, a, a hackney, <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, up to Oriel Park from Merheaven and Moor and, uh, uh, and, he says, where are you going? I went, I said, we're going up to Oriel Park and Dundalk are playing Finn Harps. He goes, it's in the back gardens. I pull the fucking blade. <laughs> <laughs> so so they had a, I don't know what way that taxi driver is now. He might watch Dundalk. But, so you got a pint of harp for two pounds oh. or maybe a pound 50. So that's, you just get fucking 
scuttered in the in the Dundalk bar. A harp is some, some yeah. to be getting scuttered And it's still on. brewed up. You can <laughs> smell it at the train station. It's like, welcome to Dundalk. What's that smell? Harp. Um, and then, yeah, McCardles and all that. So I drank, I drank Dun- Dundalk dry for about four years. McCardles? Did you drink that? Yeah, we used to get... You, see, McCardles was cheaper. Off licenses was roughly the same as a... Not not cheap, a little bit cheaper, but you could get 20 cans of McCardles for £24 or something. So if anyone doesn't know, how would you describe McCardles to him now? Fizzier than Smithix. <laughs> <laughs> So, but my friend Danny, who's now, he, 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 who died uh, about 10 years ago of cancer, but he, oh I lived with him and we used to have great crack and he was, he loved comedy. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so he, himself and his, his, his group of friends, another guy I'm still friendly with, Ronan, uh, went to Janelle Monet there recently with him, got hammered and he had to be sober, <laughs> watch me get drunk. <laughs> but thank you, Ronan, if you listen to this, for, buy, for buying me alcohol. But the, I feel like a, like a 17 year old, can somebody else get so it for me so I can tell my wife that actually Ronan forced it forced on Forced it down my throat. <laughs> but um, himself and there was two other girls in the group, I can't, uh, Stephanie and Mary. Anyway, they put on a comedy night. Yeah. So Danny put on said look I'm the only person that's entering this com- competition in the college in the black box theatre and on the day no one showed up oh, shit. so no one <laughs> so he said you'll have to do the 50 minutes oh, 50 minutes allocated an hour so he went on and did 20 minutes and um, even though he was one of my best friends and he's not with us anymore he died <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> but uh, so um, and uh, so he came off and I always remember going uh, they, they're not into my stuff they don't like my stuff and I'm going <laughs> 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 I think I'm fucking in for a death here as well never done stand up so he said you'll have to do the 50 minutes and did maybe 25 in front of about 80 people in the black box theatre 80? So, yeah oh, that's so, not bad so after after it um, you won a crate of harp oh yes and 50 pounds but she wanted to split with me and I said, no fucking way, I won the competition. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I took the 50 quid off him and uh, we we actually went to Russell's that night and spent it, which is a pub in Dundalk. So uh, having never done comedy before in your life? You no, or uh, seen comedy. And what, what, what did you talk about? What was your set like? Oh, I can't even remember. I, I used to do a lot of p- uh, parodies on the guitar and stuff like that. Yeah. And... Um, I, 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 rem- I do remember one of my first ever jokes I wrote was um, I would play um, Sometimes late at night I lie awake and watch you sleeping So they don't let me work in the hostel anymore <laughs> <laughs> So I remember that was one of the first jokes I wrote And uh, what children's game is banned in Germany Follow the leader Which oh. I thought was hilarious yeah. <laughs> And um, so there was one or two Decent gags in That's it That's good yeah. yeah It still and works And then I did a parody kind of. I did a David Bowie parody song with we're not even changing the words, but with Christy Moore singing <laughs> Ziggy Stardust, it was dreadful. <laughs> and uh, but that I got to support Joe Rooney and Patrick McDonnell in the Clembrassel Hotel. Afterwards, uh, Pat McDonald said, uh, eh, "You should, uh, hey, you should um, contact uh, Declan Rooney. He's from Loud. He he runs the Hapney Bridge Inn." So I got a gig in the Hapney Bridge Inn, and then I went over to Des, and he said, "He says." Yeah, I'll, g- I'll give you 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Des gave me 15 minutes, and then I went to Paddy Courtney on this Wednesday nights. And then after about two years of me drinking the International Bar Dry, <laughs> Des came up to me and going, yo, you've got talent, bro, but if you don't get it together, you're just going to, you're going to, it's over. And, and he said, he said, I'll give you, I'll give you gigs because you're, you're okay, but you've got to get 20 minutes. And I was friendly with Carl and Neil. And they said, look, just get 20 minutes together and stop fucking drinking <laughs> <laughs> on stage. Because you could drink and stay, you could smoke yeah. on stage. This and is Neil Delamere and Carl Spain. Neil, Neil and Carl and kind of Des went, listen, you're going to go fucking nowhere here. Des Bishop. Yeah. He said, you're going to go nowhere. Nothing's going to happen for you. And, and the big turning point really was Des because Des got a program on RT called the Des Bishop Work Experience. Yeah. And, and if ever there was a rising tide that lifted all boats, it was Des. <laughs> Go away. Yeah, because what, what became, um, and then Aiden came over to, to do the door and then uh, Seven Aiden used to hang out. And, but it, there was, the Wednesday night was Paddy and the Comedy Cellar, which Barry Murphy and Ardell and Kevin Gildee started. And then the Thursday was Des. I think Joe Rooney had it for a while. And that was Irish comedy. Yeah. Sorry, the Hapney Bridge Inn, mm. Eddie Nessence and Declan Rooney. So a bit of a scene 
Spurred Dez, on. Dez RTE took a punt with Dez and <laughs> literally what happened, I remember him, him ringing me in a panic and he went, can you come down? <laughs> I said, yeah, I can come down. He goes, yeah, okay, come down. And I remember there was a queue around the corner on the International Park, all the way from up Exchequer Street around, uh, and I was going, so I just thought, being like I was young ish, and I just thought, is it a funeral? Is it what the fuck's going on? <laughs> there's no, there's never a queue at the, at the international bar. <laughs> and I went up stage and Dad said, "Okay, we're going to do this." And and then I was going, oh, "This is amazing." And then it went Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So really, his that program in terms of the international bar, an awful lot of comedians didn't have to go. I would have been at the stage where going, I would have given up because I had no interest in going to Britain. So I just went, "Ah, oh, that's done." Yeah. But now it's like. He was giving me a call, or Aiden would give me a call to do a, w- a full weekend. Yeah, and you get, a f- you know, and it's like I can, s- I c- I'm actually doing comedy in Ireland. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? And th- you know, you had the laughter lounge, but you had to be really good to get into the laughter lounge, or you had to be always funny. And I wasn't always funny, and still not. So, like for the first few years of stand up, I would never have a set. I would just go on, and whatever I th- thought about, I would just say. Whoa! And <laughs> one in every five gigs would be amazing, and then. Four and every five for track. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> would you actually be like freestyling it? Yes, yeah. Would would no notes or jokes just going for it? Going for it because I was too lazy. I just wouldn't <laughs> write the gags. I just wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. And I remember um, Neil Denver one. He handed me a piece of paper after he said, "I've written down the stuff that has worked." Oh way. And I, I was like. Yeah, I know. <laughs> fire, fire <laughs> <away>. <laughs> no, because I'd be. It wasn't like, oh, I'm so this yeah. or that. Yeah. It'd be like I was so fucking lazy, and I was living in a bed sit in Dorset Street, and it was just, <laughs> it was just enough for me. Do you know what I mean? At a telly, okay. people would sleep on the floor the other night. I could go out every night of the week. I just didn't care. And um, it sounds like paradise to me. <laughs> it was a comedy intervention yeah. by by three or four lads. It just went, you're go, you're gone, you're going to go. Do you know what I mean? It was like. Like, I can't give you spots here anymore if you keep fucking dying every fourth <laughs> gig. Do you know what I mean? No, but the um, fat chances. You've been, been a yes. bit hard on yourself there, are you? Well, what, the opening line of the gig, we still have three left to do, but the opening line was, I said, I, I, I didn't tell Carl, because Carl is the king of roasting, right? If you ever go see him, like he can just rip someone apart. Okay. And uh, so... I didn't tell him the first night we did. And I said, oh, we're fat chancers. Um, and the reason why we're doing this tour is that last year I did um, uh, <laughs> Celebrity Come Down. Uh, Dancing, oh, Dancing with the Stars. Dancing with the Stars. And Carol did Operation. <laughs> 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 right, I'll leave it hanging. <laughs> and he got genuinely shocked the first night. And I was like, oh, fuck, I didn't mean to. So we were both, both two fat lads that, went, that, that, just, that were taking a chance. The problem was when we started selling the tour... People thought um, <laughs> Fat Chances was a group or a thing. or <laughs> Then we were kind of going, we over, over-egged this pudding, pardon the, the eating <laughs> pun. And I said, like, so it was j- so basically me and Carl would just go out. So I would go, he'd, we'd both go out at the top, take the piss out of each other. He'd mm. do for, uh, 30, 30 minutes, then we'd take a break, and then I'd come out. I hadn't enough material, and I wanted to, I kind of felt to him, I said, well, look, I could go out and... You know, I've always car will up your game. You know, okay. so like yeah, very hard follow him. Yeah, yeah. And you need you need that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You need to be able to go. Uh, like I hate sometimes you're doing Kilkenny and like if so, Tommy Tiernan is on, you're going to have to fucking follow this. Oh. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, you know, mean? Like, you know but but no, actually that has never happened because that would that would be the but I, if, if a comedian's on and they're doing like they're ripping the place apart. Yeah. You're going, <laughs> now, because you can't enjoy them because you know you're on next. Yeah. But you need it because it ups your game. And even mm. if you know the material that you're going out, you yeah. up your performance because you go, I want to be as good as the last yeah. person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, I'm glad we're on before Tommy is. <laughs> oh, well, Jeez. speaking of, I remember I followed El- Eleanor Tiernan once in the Ivy Gardens and, like, the, the IRA wouldn't have blown the roof off better, <laughs> right? <laughs> And I remember going, I remember being at the side of the stage going, fuck. <laughs> right. I was going, oh, come on, Eleanor, just do a bad guy. Just please, something to go wrong. Like you break your arm or arm. Like it's terrible what comedians will wish on each other. Oh and they'll never admit it. But you know it's true. Yeah, yeah. You know, but, uh, well, w- would you get nervous before you go on? Now I would because I'm not doing enough stand-up. I'm trying to get back into it. I'm trying to do more. But absolutely, I'd be shitting a brick now. Yeah. Particularly, I did... Um, 
Colm O'Regan has a gig in Kilmainham and I did that recently and Dave O'Doherty was there who was an amazing Irish comedian Yeah. and I said I'm really nervous he was taught, I genuinely thought he thought I was taking the piss but I haven't done a club gig in ever like oh, five yeah. six years and they're different because they're not paying in to see you they're, they're, they're paying to see whoever's on Yeah. yeah. so it's really Coliseum lines stuff <laughs> And if you're not if you're not on it, and I'm not, I, I'm I'm getting back fit, trying to get match fit, yeah. and I'm not match fit. I know I'm not, but but I am. A li- I'm getting there. Okay. And uh, I was shitting it. Yeah. Uh, as nervous as I was for the, the first time I ever did a gig. Oh, it depends on the forty he wants it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The people I would, want I, I'll tell you what I would like to t- I would like to take a break mm. and, and, and and maybe come back with Bridget Name in the 70s or Bridget Name in the 90s okay yeah yeah um, and because I think uh, I'm not saying the 80s are done but we had we loved doing the 70s bits with the band and we had an idea to do a full series with the band just the band with Jennifer as that kind of a hippie dippy girl that keeps getting off with Dermot Whelan yeah. and, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Dermot Dermot would be happy enough for that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it was um I'd love to. I'd love to see Bridget Naiman in the nineties, particularly yeah. when the boom started kicking in. Yeah, oh, yeah. and their children are growing up, and they're being arseholes. Just buying loads of houses. Yeah, <laughs> Eamon would buy loads of houses. Yeah. just just and be the, the shittiest landlord. <laughs> uh, but um, I'd love to see that. Or Eamon getting a panini. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? Someone drove drove over a fucking sandwich. <laughs> but like, I would love to see that. But yeah.